thank you very much for inviting me to speak about the unity of African traditional religion. To speak of the unity of African traditional religion seems to be a utopia in view of present diversity of the trends of this religion. However, history teaches us that the unity of African traditional religion was a fact when one considers the ancient civilizations of Egypt, Nubia, and Sumer, as these later belonged culturally to Africa. Moreover, though within the Egyptian culture, there seems to be three different theologies. These varieties was perceived not as being contradictory, but complementary. This implies that locally and globally, religion, religious unity was a fact in ancient setting of African culture. This unity of ancient African civilizations can be demonstrated through comparative study by using the chemistic cosmological argument. The cosmo a cosmological argument can be defined as an attempt to demonstrate the existence of God by starting from the existence of the cosmos. However, as used in Western theology and philosophy, this attempt has always been a failure. The Western cosmological argument happens to demonstrate the existence of a creator of this temporal universe, but is unable up to now to prove that this creator is the most high being. The failure of the West to demonstrate the existence of the Most High is due to the wrong conception of his nature as a supreme being creator. A Most High God who is the creator of the temporal realm cannot exist. This can be demonstrated by asking the following question. Where does creation occur? If creation occurs in God, thus he changes at the moment of creation because something in him goes from nothingness to existence. This naturally begs the question of the existence of the existence of a principle of the mutability of God. Now, such a principle must be greater than God according to the law of causality. However, God is perceived to be the greatest possible being. So this is impossible. Maybe creation occurs outside of God. However, in this case, such a creation added to God will result in an entity greater than God, greater, greater than the greatest possible being. This is also impossible. So you see, in both ways, the divinity has conceived in the West is a logical impossibility. A most high God, who is at the same time the creator, cannot exist. To prove the unity of religion in ancient African cultures, we use the chemistic cosmological argument. Contrary to the failure of the cosmological argument as used in Western culture, the chemistic cosmological argument proves the existence, proves the existence of a most high God who is different from the creator 
and it extends into a systematic natural theology. This particular argument can be summarily introduced this way. The individual nature of our temporal universe has a collection of individual entities, makes of it the product of an individual cause. In the infinity of possibilities, the individuality of these cause implies the existence of other similar causes. Each of these different causes can be effective or potential, that is, having already or not having yet created its temporal universe. Under the hypothesis that every creation exists in its creator, a non-indispensable hypothesis introduced only for the sake of brevity, there is a being that includes the sum total of these potential and effective causes. This latter being is therefore the greatest possible being. He is thus the most high God. It follows that as the greatest possible being, the most high is absolutely immutable and indivisible. For a mutable and divisible God who require the existence of a principle of his mutability and divisibility. Now, according to the law of causality, which matches to an effect a cause anterior and adequate, this principle must be greater than God, that is, greater than the greatest possible being, which is impossible. Being indivisible and the greatest possible entity, the most high must be transcendent, that is, he is above all and doesn't know evil. Under the indivisibility, the indivisible nature of his being, a knowledge of evil would imply that God is infinitely good and infinitely bad, because consciousness and essence are one in the setting of his absolute indivisibility. So, being infinitely good and infinitely bad is an ontological impossibility. We have seen that each effective and potential creator expresses an individuality which is included in the Most High. Now, the Most High is indivisible. Thus, each creator, in other words, each child of God, expresses the wholeness of God in an individual manner. We call this wholeness the Logos. Thus, we have three celestial entities. God, the Most High, the Father, Mother, the Creators, or the Children of God, and the Logos. The Father, Mother, the Child of the Children of God, and the Logos. The indivisible nature of the Most High implies that there is a unity of the Father, Mother, the Child, and the Logos. They are one in existence, in substance, and in activity. This solar trinity, this is solar trinity, it can be illustrated this way. If one is in front of a mirror, the power of the reflection of the mirror and the image in the said mirror form along with him a trinity. When he moves, his image moves also, thanks to the power of the reflection of the mirror. 